Whether it's adding stickers to your laptop or actually tagging a street corner with graffiti, you're eventually going to want to add decals to your scene and objects in Blender. Today I'm going to show you a very simple technique to do that using image planes. So the first thing we need to do is we need to make sure that we have the right add-on to import images as actual plane objects. So you want to go to preferences, go to add-ons, and you want to search for images, and just make sure this import images as plane add-on is enabled. Whenever you do that, whenever you go to the import settings, you'll see this new option, which is import images as planes. Now, if you just enable Blender, you may have to restart it to get this option to show up, but it should be there once you have the add-on enabled. So once the add-on is enabled, it's time to actually import your image into the scene. So go to file, import images as planes, select your image, and import it into the scene. Now let's go ahead and rotate so we can actually see the plane here. Now when you first open up Blender and you import it, you'll notice that it's just a blank plane right now. That's because the image is actually being applied as a material. So you want to go into a material preview mode to actually see the image in the viewport. And there we go. You can see I got a nice image of my face ready to go. So we have our image as a plane in Blender. If we go into edit mode, you can see that it's just a plane made up of four points. We have definitely want to add more geometry to this plane since we're going to be projecting it onto our objects. We want to go to the modifiers. We want to go to the subdivision surface and we want to change it from Catmull Clark to simple. What this does is it's adding extra geometry in here, but it's not modifying the shape. So if we go ahead and just increase the subdivisions here. Let's go ahead and increase it to six. So that's adding more geometry to the actual plane itself, but it's not adjusting the shape at all. This is going to help whenever we add more complex surfaces here in a little bit. So now that we have the plane and it has more geometry that we can work with, it's time to actually project our image onto our object. And what we can do is we can use the shrink wrap modifier to actually do that. So if we add a shrink wrap modifier to our plane and select the target as the cube, you can see that the image goes ahead and projects itself onto the cube. Now, as we rotate the camera, you'll notice some flickering. This is because the image is being directly projected onto the cube and it's laying flat against the surface and the the actual surface of the cube and the surface of the image are actually occupying the same space and so the renderer isn't quite sure which one it needs to draw at any given moment and so what we can do is we can actually add an offset to this to help alleviate that so if we add just a very very tiny offset not a whole lot just enough to tell blender that this plane needs to be in front of the cube uh, just to get that drawing order now you can see that the flickering has stopped. The image is definitely in front of the cube, but if we go to the side, we don't see any discernible space between the image and the cube. It's too small to discern with the human eye. And that is the basics for how to project an image onto a surface in Blender. So this works pretty well with flat surfaces, but what if we had a more complex shape? Let's say we add a cylinder into the mix. Let's go ahead and duplicate our image as well and get rid of the target so we can actually see what we're doing. So here we go, we have a new object that we want to cast this image onto. And if we do the shrink wrap modifier like we did before, shrink wrap it on the cylinder, you can see there's some weird projection issues going on. That's because the wrap method we've selected is the nearest surface point, which means it takes wherever the uh, image is and it tries to project it onto the nearest point of the object, which unfortunately for a cylinder are these two faces right here. So it's projecting everything onto these faces because these are the nearest points. This obviously doesn't work for a spherical object. So we need to change this wrap method from nearest surface point to project. And what this is doing is it's saying, okay, from this surface normal, we're going to just go forward. And once we hit the object, that's where we're going to sit. Uh, unfortunately, the default is the positive axis, meaning that's trying to project this way instead of towards the sphere. So all we need to do is select off the positive and select negative, and that's projecting it in the direction that we expect it to. And you can see now that the new, with this new projection method, it's actually casting it properly on there. And you can see that the image is now properly on the object. And this technique also works with more rounded and more complex geometry as well. So I've casted my face onto this ball here and you can see it looks really, really well. And it even works with objects that are much more complex like Lucille here. See, right now I have a projected face on. It looks pretty decent. You can see a little bit of shading as it's projecting onto the faces, but as you kind of rotate it, it does kind of lose that effect, but that's just because of the complex geometry. This technique does work, but your mileage may vary depending on the complexity of the object in question. But dead on, it looks pretty good. And that is a quick and easy way to add decals to your objects and scenes in Blender. Now you too can go out and put your face on literally everything. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.